Hey, Damon Dayton here. Congrats on your new Mike Buff Fast Ripper. Your bike came partially assembled in the box, but I'm here to show you how to get it rolling. I would recommend having an experienced bicycle mechanic help you on this project, but if you had the right tools, you can do it yourself. To build your Mike Buff Fast Ripper, you'll need items like cable and chain lubricant, grease, pliers, a 15 millimeter wrench, cable cutters or scissors, and metric Allen wrenches from two to six millimeters. You'll also need a Phillips screwdriver. Your bike box may be sealed with glue, staples, or both. If yours came with staples, safely remove them with pliers and then throw the staples in the trash. Remove the bike from the box. Ask a friend if you need help. Don't forget to grab the seat and the separate parts box. Remove the packing material around the bike and use wire cutters or scissors to carefully cut any zip ties. The box that the bike came in can be used as a bike stand to help during the build. Simply put the frame and rear wheel back inside the box while keeping the forks on the outside. Be careful not to catch the derailleur on the side of the box though. Remove the four bolts from the top of the stem using an Allen wrench. Also remove the two pinch bolts on the side of the stem. Add a small dab of grease to the threads on each bolt before reinstalling them. Grease is super important here, so don't skip it. Place the handlebars onto the stem while making sure that they're facing in the correct direction and that the brake and derailleur cables are routed correctly in the front of the handlebars. Make sure that the clamping area of the handlebar is centered in the stem. Evenly tighten the grease bolts with an Allen wrench using a cross pattern to distribute pressure evenly. For the front to back angle of the handlebars, align them to the same angle as the forks. You can fine tune the angle later, but this is a good starting point. Now it's time for the seat and post. Take a small dab of grease and wipe it around on the inside of the seat tube. Look at the sides of the seat post for a line indicating its minimum insertion point. Be sure that the post is inserted into the frame to that level or further. Align the seat so it runs parallel to the frame's top tube and then tighten the seat clamp by pressing the quick release lever back towards the frame until it's fully closed. If the seat clamp doesn't hold the post securely, open the lever, tighten the nut opposite of the lever, and then re-engage the lever. It may take a few adjustments to get the seat clamp to the right tension. Remove the bike from the box. To attach the front wheel, loosen the axle nuts on each side of the wheel and prepare to slide the axle into the fork dropouts. Make sure that the front brake rotor is on the left side of the bike. The safety washer should be on the outside of the forks so you can press the tabs into place. Tighten the axle nuts evenly on the side of the wheel using a 15 millimeter wrench while making sure that the front wheel stays centered within the forks. Make sure that the retention washer hook stays in the hole on the fork dropout when tightening the axle nut. Remove the spacer and the front brake caliper. It's important that you do not pull the front brake lever when the wheel is off and the spacer is removed. Make sure you do not get grease on the brake rotor or the brake pads or you will contaminate them. Carefully slide the caliper over the brake rotor. Add grease to the mounting bolts and lightly attach the caliper to the fork. Pull the front brake lever to center the caliper around the brake rotor. Keep the brake lever engaged while you tighten the mounting bolts or the brake will move out of alignment. Centering adjustments may be needed on the caliper mount as well. Cable clips are included to attach your front brake cable to the mounts on the forks. You can also use zip ties to secure them. Get the pedals out of the parts box. You can identify the left and right pedals by the L and R printed on the pedal cages. Add a dab of grease to the threads. Attach the pedals using your hand to turn the spindle towards the front of the bike. When you're sure that the threads are seated properly, use a 15 millimeter wrench to tighten each pedal. Adjust the angle of the seat and its position on the rails using an Allen wrench on the bolt underneath the seat. Adjust the seat post to a comfortable height and check that the seat clamp is holding it securely in the frame. Straddle the bike and look down at the front wheel to see if it's in alignment with the frame. If needed, loosen the pinch bolts on the side of the stem to adjust the side to side angle of the front wheel. If the headset feels too tight or too loose, this can be adjusted using the bolts on the stem. Loosen the pinch bolts on the side of the stem and then use the compression bolt on the top of the fork to add or release tension. When you find the correct tension, tighten the pinch bolts to secure the stem. 
Be sure that your front wheel and handlebars stay in alignment during this process. Both tires will need air. Use a pump to inflate them using the PSI guide on the tire sidewall. Don't use higher or lower air pressure than what's printed on the tire because using too much or too little can damage your tire and rim. Your derailleur has been adjusted at the factory to provide smooth shifting. Fine adjustments can be made using a Phillips screwdriver. However, it's best handled by an experienced bicycle mechanic. You can also add a quality lubricant to the chain, but be sure to wipe off any excess and don't get any lubricant on the brake rotors or calipers. Check that the bolts on your cranks and sprocket are all tight. Applying grease to these bolts is also recommended. The front and rear brakes have been adjusted at the factory, but disc brakes need to be bedded in. You cannot skip this step or your brakes will not work properly and they will potentially make a lot of noise. To bed the brakes in, ride your bike and get your bike up to a medium speed and then apply the front and rear brake as you continue to pedal. Gradually slow down but do not come to a full stop and don't try to skid. Just gradually slow down. You need to repeat the process 10 times for each, the front brakes and the rear brakes. This allows the rotors and pads to mirror each other so they work smoothly. You're almost ready to shred, but before you start riding, go over every nut and bolt on the bike one more time to make sure they're all secure. For optimal performance, some riders take extra steps during assembly, including tightening spokes and greasing bearings. We'll cover those steps in another video. Now add the included safety items and go ride.